Welcome to Clash Course Episode 2. Last week we talked about Dark Horses. This week I wanted to talk about my absolute favorite Dark Horse. This is kind of a pet deck for me. And I wanted to just kind of dive a little bit down so you can try this out for yourself at home. This is Vincent. Vincent is unique. Really, Vincent plays with, we like to say, 3.5 cards. We don't have a four card hand. We don't have a three card hand. It's 3.5. At the beginning of your turn, you have to banish a card and you create a rune chant. Her second ability is that when you play a shadow non-attack, you can pay one life and make a rune chant unpreventable. For our equipment here, we are running Aether and Iron Weave. This is more for the block. We will use its ability after we block. We'll use its ability. Uh, oftentimes, it'll be on like a Mob Sky turn, and they fully block it, so we can't get our second one out. And so we'll pop it, and we'll then hit them with, ping them with a Scepter of Pain. I'm gonna skip over to Goliath Gauntlet. Goliath Gauntlet. It's really there for breakpoints. We're really trying to hit breakpoints. So seven is the main breakpoint we're trying to hit. That's where that's so our goal is here to turn a five into a seven there. Iron Rot Helm. This is to just block one. Mage Master Boots. We actually have the Mage Master Boots in here for read the runes. So we can Mage Master Boots, play read the runes, it gets go again, and then we'll um, attack with like Deathly Whale or something. Scepter of Pain, pay two, ping them for one. If it hits, create a rune chant. I am, I just more more recently removed Flail of Agony. I don't use this a lot. And so I felt like getting a plus one for Bloody Opal. I think it's more helpful because a lot of times at the beginning of the game, I will banish a, a Blood Deck card and then that'll ping me, bring me down to 19. And on their turn, I'll just immediately block the Bloody Opal. Get that point of damage out so it really kind of counter affects that initial blood tap. Our best cards in here is Deathly Whale by far. You want Deathly Whale out, this is what you're constantly trying to do. If you are able to get Envelop in Darkness with Deathly Whale, you are going to automatically damage yourself because Deathly Whale reads when the chain closes, you get a rune chant for every player that has lost life this turn. Say with Deathly Delight, um, that when a chain closes, you gain life for every player that has lost life this turn. So if you do that, like you'll just, you'll make unpreventable and then you'll get that life back. So Deathly Whale is really our great setup. So I like to do things like, I'm gonna play Deathly Whale if I can ping myself, I'm going to, I'll create a rune chant. More than likely they're letting a rune chant hit and they'll fully block out damage or one on one, whatever. And then, um, then we'll get two rune chants and we'll set up our, our next turn. Two Rune Chants is really where we live our bread and butter, like Deathly Delight, Vandom Banshee. Our goal though is to try to push these up a little bit further. So Vandom, uh, sorry, Vandom Wrath for instance. This one is a six, so you're trying to push that to a seven, so Envelop Darkness or Envelop the Dark Knight. Those are both good in there. We do run, we're trying to run a mixture of defense with, with offense because we are a lot of times we lose about three to four to our blood debt in a game. That's a, that's a lot of points. I mean, you're essentially looking at, hey, we are starting off at 17 health, 16 health. Like that is very, very low. So we're running Reduced Rune Tant, Sigil of Suffering. We're running Oath of the Arknight because a lot of times I have floating mana if I'm able to play this out, but this is block three. So I, I like Oath of the Arknight simply because it is a block three. I have yellow and blue, so I can pitch it to develop things. Uh, but it is also my three block. All of our, all of our blood deck cards. These are all threes, and then everything else is two. So two, 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 two. This is our three. So this is trying to counter fact, to counter the fact that we have a lot of twos in our deck. Sigil suffering is great because I'm going to ping them on their turn. They're either going to block it or they're not. If they block it, um, if they don't block it, I'm pinging them and I get four. If they do block it, they're getting rid of a card. So I try to kind of set up Sigil Suffering, obviously, for when they don't have any float. So a lot of times our turns are gonna be set up of, I'm gonna block with two, I'm gonna banish a card, and then I'm either going to swing with Scepter or I'm going to Arsenal that card. Many times what I'm doing is the only time I'm not Arsenal is if I have like a Deathly Whale or a Phantom Banshee or something like that. Things I don't want to Arsenal. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to ping for one. 
any non-attack, I'm gonna arsenal it. Um, I'll arsenal my reduces, my rune blood incantations, my read the runes, all of that. That's what I want to arsenal. So only time I use scepter is when it's a card I don't want to arsenal. And so that that's gonna be your rotation of block with two, banish one, arsenal card or scepter. Do that the next turn. Block with two, banish one, and then you're gonna play out the card if there's one in 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 your arsenal, and then play out this. Sequencing wise, like don't be afraid to take a turn off and try to build a burn chance. So oftentimes what I'll do is I will block with two, sometimes three, and I'll banish a one that doesn't have blood debt, one that I can't get out, simply because um, I need to rebuild up my rune chance. So if I can, I'll do that. And sometimes I'll do that for a couple turns where I can just go block, you know, seven to nine damage, put that one in, get my rune chant and do that again next turn. I'm trying to set it up so I can get something in there. Uh, it's occasionally, you know, we don't have a deathly whales or something that we can pull in blood that we're not going to be able to hit the break point. It is better to take a turn off than to um, take a turn off and hit that break point than to say, hey, I'm going to hit you with this Phantom Wrath. I'm going to hit you for two and then six. And then they just fully block it and then you have to rebuild back up to rebuild your rune chance back up and they you know especially guardians and then they just hey i'm gonna block all that damage and then i'm gonna swing my hammer and you go wrap the four damage i take one and now i have to rebuild back up and now i have a turn off and you can do that so we want to make sure that our turns are really 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 powerful pummel is our number one card in this deck this is how we win games this is how we set up uh this is how we change momentum so make sure that your pummels are you never do anything with pummel except put it in arsenal unless you're going to play from your hand which more than likely you don't have enough cards unless they had an off turn occasionally that happens where they get an off turn and i can you know pummel them straight from my hand but a lot of times pummel sits in my arsenal for two three four turns and i'll just keep swinging and set up stuff and then i'll have that one turn where i finally aligned my pummel to be able to take over whether it's win the game or give me momentum so this is what lives in my arsenal a lot of the time yes it does stink having to not run having to not have an arsenal and have that sit there for two or three turns but it's better to do that and then pummel and then get it get that off so you're really trying to block as efficiently as possible so you can get your pummel turns off and really take over the game down here sideboard straightforward Oblivion that comes in and out. I'm doing a lot of experimenting with Oblivion. I'm not sure where it lives. I try having it live full time in the deck and I pulled off Oblivion like twice. Whenever I do pull off Oblivion, it is game changer and I, I've won. Six damage coming in, they either deal with it or don't, and then I can fully block and then deal with six at you. Um, that That's huge. So it, it just kind of depends um, in there. It's not too difficult to get up to six, but a lot of times to get up to six, you have to take a couple turns off. And so most of the time, Oblivion, anytime I played Oblivion, it's in like, it's on like turn two, turn three, some some point where I set up, I happen to have six in there, I play it, bam, and then I go. All right, and that's my event set build. It is gonna be fluctuating. I, I think over the next few weeks, I'll try to solidify it. Thank you everybody, I'll see you next week for Clash Course. We will have a Vincent game out this week. So check us out in a couple days and check out Vincent as she just blasts onto the clash scene. <laughs>